Hello and welcome to another video. In this video I want to show you how you can get started with HashiCorp's Vault. I will be running a Vault server in a Docker container. I will be showing you how you can use the Vault CLI to write and retrieve secrets. And I will also be showing a example in Python how we can retrieve a secret from a Vault server. If you would like to get started too, stay tuned. HashiCorp Vault lets you manage secrets and protect sensitive data. Um, HashiCorp Vault is a very popular application and solution um, and a lot of third-party uh, applications do actually offer also integration with HashiCorp Vault. If you uh, want to get started, you can head on over to vaultproject.io and uh, here you'll find more information. There's also some tutorials, uh, some other documentation. And they also do offer a cloud version. Um, but what I will be doing in this demonstration is the open source self-managed version. And uh, so the first thing before we can get started is we would need to get the appropriate uh, Vault Docker container. So let's head on over to uh, Docker Hub and look for that container. Before I continue, I wanted to mention that um, upon some feedback that I got on some of my videos, um, all the websites and commands, or the websites that I will be referencing, as well as the commands that I will be using, I will put in this video's description so you can easily access them and recreate exactly what I'm doing here. With that being said, uh, here I am on the Docker Hub webpage. And um, to get to the Vault Docker image, simply go up in the very top, on the very top of the web page, and just type in Vault in the search box, and then hit enter. And the first result that should come up is actually the official Vault image. Um, you see here it has over 100 million downloads. And here you want to just click on the link. And here is our Docker pull command. Um, the latest version for this is okay. There's other tags available. Um, however, we'll just stick for this demo with the uh, latest version. Before pulling the uh, um, the Docker image, I want to scroll down here a little bit, and you'll find some description here too um, as to how to use these Docker this uh, Docker container or the Docker image in this case, and um, you'll find some examples in here too. We will be using the uh, similar commands. I will change them a little bit, but I will walk through it as we get to running the container. So with that being said, let's go ahead. Let's uh, copy this command and hop on over to our command line. Here I am in my terminal. Uh, I'm running on Fedora 35. Um, not that it really matters, but um, let's go ahead and pull our Docker image. As we saw in on Docker Hub, it's a docker pull vault and let's hit enter and let's download uh, that image and once it's downloaded i will be back oh, it's done already there we go and uh, now we have our image downloaded so now we need to see how do we start our docker image let's go back to the documentation and take a quick look being back in Docker Hub and at the uh, Vault Docker image documentation and quick reference, if we scroll down a little bit, we will find a section running Vault for development. This is exactly what we want to do. There's a little bit of explanation what we need here, and this is the command that we're interested in. So we want to run a Docker run cap add to add Linux capabilities to our container. IPC underscore lock is needed in order to run um, a vault in the Docker container to run vault. And this is just locking memory and preventing swapping memory to the hard disk. We need to go ahead and pass two variables in or two parameters. One of them would be our vault def root token ID um, where we can set our token. And then we need to also pass in the vault dev listen address where we're passing in the address that we want vault to listen on. Um, we bind it here to 0000, which will bind it to the IP address of our Docker container or local host or wherever you're running it. 
and the port we can set. And then we want to here set the image that we want to run. Um, this generally um, is an OK command, I guess, to uh, run the uh, Docker container. However, um, we'll change it slightly um, to make it a little bit more fit to what I want to do here. So let's go ahead and copy this. And let's move back to the CLI and we'll change this uh, command a little bit. Here I'm back on my CLI. I will go ahead and clear my screen. And let's paste the command that we've copied over. And let's take a look. So first off, docker run. I want to run this in detached mode. So I'm adding a dash D. I want to remove the container once it stops. I'm adding that. And I'm adding also a name. And I want to call it vault server. And the rest of the command can stay. And we maybe want to change the token if you want to do that. I will call mine here tdc-token. Um, the vault listen address, we can leave two. I want to change the port to 8200. And that's it. And now we can run our Docker container. So all I've done here is, is I've just added the dash D to run in the background, remove the container, so the dash dash RM once the container stops. I gave my container a name and then I've changed the token here and I've changed the port. Again, I will put this full command also in the description of the video. So I will hit enter and our Docker container is running, our vault server. So we can do a docker ps and take a look. And here is my vault server and it's running happily. So now let's see how we can get additional information that we will need in order to actually connect to our server. So that we can connect to our Vault server from the uh, Vault CLI, which we'll be looking at installing after we set everything up here, we will need to get the IP address for our Docker container um, so that we can connect. So how can you get the IP address for your Docker container? In this case, we can just run a docker inspect vault server and we just pipe to grab IP address. So uh, this should give you the IP address. Um, here I just want to point out if you named your container you can use your container name and um, otherwise you would need to use the container ID. So if I hit enter and then it will return the IP address here. So the IP address of our container is 172.17.0.2. Now, what we need to do is we need to create a environment variable um, so that when we're using the Vault CLI that we can connect. And the environment variable that we'll be using is simply set up with an export vault underscore addr for address equals and then we can put a single quote http seeing that we are just running on http not https forward slash forward slash 172.17.0.2 and we set our listen port to 8200 so we just type in 8200 here and close our quotes and we're all set so we can hit enter and now we have our vault address set up and now we can take a look at installing the CLI. However, before we do that, I want to show you the uh, vault UI first. So let's hop on over to the web browser. If you have followed the instructions so far and you're in your web browser and you use the IP address, in this case 172.17.0.2, again for you that might be different, um, and then the port that you have entered, in my case 8200, you will be brought to the login page for Vault. Um, the login method here is token. Um, seeing that we set our token when we started our container, in my case it was tdc-token. And whatever you set as your token, you can then hit sign in. And there we go. Here we are now in our 
HashiCorp, a Vault um, UI. You see the different secret engines that are available, Secret and Cubbyhole. You can create a new engine if you would like. Um, this tutorial is not about the UI. I'll just quickly browse through it. Here is the different access permissions that you can set for entities, groups, leases, authentication methods. Then you have policies here, and then you have some other tools that you can use. Just wanted to make sure, and um, this is one way that you can check that your Docker container is uh, working properly and that you have access to the UI. Now let's go ahead and install the Vault client. Here I am back on the vaultproject.io webpage. And um, when you are on this webpage and we use the open source, you can click on download. And then here you can choose for the system that you are running what you need to install. In my case, it was Linux. And then here for Fedora, I followed these instructions. Um, it depends on what system you're running on. You may want to follow the appropriate instructions. Um, and then you should have the Vault uh, CLI available on your system. So I have followed these instructions before, just now to make sure that you know where you find this. Again, the link will also be in the description of the video. Once you follow the install instructions for your appropriate um, operating system and everything is installed, you can try to see if Vault installed properly by simply typing Vault-H for help. And if you hit enter, you should get a list of different commands that you can use in the Vault CLI. Um, as you can see, this is uh, properly installed. And now we can go and we can see if we can connect to our server. To connect, I will clear my screen first. We will just run a simple vault login and hit enter. It will ask us for our token. That's the password that we gave it before. In my case, TDC dash token, and I will hit enter. And there we go. We were able to successfully log into our vault server that is running in a docker container um, if you get an error uh, i suggest double check your environment variable and um, that that has been set correctly um, and make sure that your docker container is running let's go ahead and write our first secret before we do that i will again clear my screen and to write our first secret we'll just write the following command vault kv put because we want to write a secret we got to give it the engine secret then we can give it a path um, i will call it just tdc for toby's developer corner and then we give it a key value and our secret should be um, tdc password equals i'm just making something up test one two three four this is our password that we want to store and i hit enter and it will tell us that it did write the password it give us the create time um, it will give us the version and so forth so we've just successfully wrote our first secret to vault and now let's take a look how we can retrieve the secret and to retrieve the secret again i will clear my screen and that would be a the command for that is uh, vault kv and then it is get secret and then we got to give it the path so the engine and the path and if i hit enter there it returned my secret that i have just stored we're getting some metadata back and then we're getting the data back key value so kv key value and here is my key tdc password and here is my value and this is how you write and retrieve data or secrets that you write to um, a vault server in the on the command line using the vault cli here we're taking a look at the python solution i have switched over to visual studio code um, I am using the HVAC package, which is the HashiCorp Vault client um, 
package or one of them that you can use in Python in order to connect. Um, and then I have created here a client and uh, you create this with HVAC client. You give it the URL and the token. I've passed it in here as plain text. You can obviously use your um, OS environment variables or um, any other way that you can pass this in. <coughs> For this demo here, I've just used the plain text um, passing of the token as well as the URL. Then I am checking here if my client is actually authenticated, meaning uh, can I actually go in and can I retrieve any secrets? Then I'm reading the response, meaning I am getting the secret from my client, uh, from my server. So in this case, client secrets, KV, uh, key value, read secret version, and then I'm given it the path and uh, we've created the path of TDC in our case, or in my case here. And then I'm printing it out. And as you may recall, we get some metadata back and some other stuff. So we need to drill down a little bit in the response. So it's data, data, and then the key of what we want to get, which is our TDC password that we have created. Um, I'm running this in a Python virtual environment. Um, and again, I've only installed HVAC and that's it. I'm running on Python version 3.10. Um, not that that makes a huge difference. Um, as long as you run on 3, you should be fine. So with that being said, let's um, run the script. I called it um, Vault Connect. So if I'm running this, and you will see here, um, I'm printing out if I'm authenticated, which is true. And here is my password. And this is how you can use a very simple example here. I will not share this uh, because this is really too simple. Um, but you can copy this down if you want to. There is other implementations and other packages you can use to connect. Um, HVAC has always worked fine for me. So um, you can go ahead and use that for testing purposes. If you're interested in learning more about HVAC, um, I will put the link to the uh, read the docs um, into the video description and you will have all the necessary information to use the HVAC uh, package if you would like to um, and that should get you started with that. Uh, this concludes the video, a quick demo and introduction into how you can run um, HashiCorp Vault in a Docker container, how you write a secret, how you can retrieve a secret, and a quick um, script example how you can do this. You can obviously do this with any other language that you would like. You would just need to find the appropriate documentation and implementation so you can go ahead and use it. But uh, I hope you found this video helpful. And as always, if you have any kind of um, feedback from me, I'm always open for feedback. If you liked the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And uh, don't uh, forget to subscribe if you would like to. Thank you very much for watching and uh, happy coding.